Hello, everyone. My name is Philip Gravnicek with Ada Corp, and I wanted to thank you for taking some time to join us to hear about how the material in our new book on learn.adacore.com called Ada for the Embedded C Developer can help you economically improve safety, security, and portability of your embedded projects using Ada. Our new book is more than just words on a page. It's an interactive, hands-on web experience that allows you to work with C and Ada code side by side in your browser. The book presents powerful ideas in its text alongside embedded code editors, which allow the reader to compile and run code to explore their usefulness firsthand. The material in this book was written for C developers and is comprised of practical solutions we have developed while supporting C developers undergoing the journey of making their code safer and more secure with Spark and Ada. So why should you use this book to learn Ada? Ada was designed to solve the problems faced by large embedded software projects. And learning it is an effective way to learn general embedded software engineering principles. Tools to begin this journey are easily accessible through the GNAT academic program and community editions of our tools. Best of all, Ada is conceptually familiar to C, but with fewer gotchas, such as implicit conversions. This makes it very easy to pick up. For a C or C++ developer such as myself, reaching the level to write an application using advanced features like generic programming took about a week. Learning Ada's rich specification semantics will improve how you think about modeling your application domain and the power the language and its tooling can provide you in implementing and analyzing this model. While learning about Ada's safer primitives will help you better identify the common sources of errors and undefined behavior in your program and how you can decrease or eliminate them entirely. So far, we've been discussing at a high level that this book's material can help you use Ada to learn and implement embedded software engineering principles important to the design of safe, secure, and maintainable code. Now let's look in more detail at just a fraction of the useful topics covered in this book. As mentioned earlier, the power of Ada is that it provides semantics to the programmer to more precisely specify what their code should do. This makes their code more understandable and maintainable, but most importantly, allows tools to use these rich semantics to have the programmers back by performing more accurate static analysis and inserting runtime checks to ensure program correctness. Ada's type system is a key language feature that aids in this and is covered in depth by the book. In Ada, types are defined using constraints and better model your domain's data. Consider a system in which you need to represent a score on a test. In C, one would use a type definition to alias an unsigned integer. But notice that this type still allows assignment of an invalid grade, such as 120. The equivalent definition in Ada allows us to specify that valid grades are only in the range 0 to 100. During compilation, the compiler will automatically insert runtime checks to ensure that an invalid value is never assigned to a variable of this type. So why might this be useful? Suppose one is implementing a complex algorithm to determine the score. If the algorithm produces an invalid result, the programmer will quickly receive feedback about this error. The type system also requires that all conversions be explicit. This eliminates code whose intent is obfuscated by implicit conversions. Even in a simple example like arithmetic mixing integer and floating point types, the C developer will pause, if even for the briefest time, to expend mental effort about whether the result is the Ada code on the left or on the right. In C, arrays are a common source of errors, such as buffer overflow or off by one errors. This is because the bounds of the array are loosely coupled with the array itself. The book has plenty of examples with the Ada array, a first class citizen with bounds that can be accessed at runtime and explains how off by one errors are avoided using range based looping and buffer overflow errors are mitigated by array bounds checks automatically inserted by the compiler. Let's look at an example. The C code on the left compiles without a problem, but even in the sunny day scenario where the size parameter n 
is actually the size of array A, the subtle off by one error in the for loops predicate ensures that a buffer overflow occurs and memory is corrupted. In contrast, in ADA, looping over A using the array's range attribute ensures that no out of bounds access can occur. Now suppose an index into the array was computed algorithmically and the result was out of bounds. In ADA, an automatically inserted compiler runtime check would catch this error and put it on the developer's radar sooner. ADA helps improve code safety by reducing the usage of pointers. Techniques for doing this are described in great detail in the book, but it also covers the case when pointers should be used and how pointer usage is made safer using ADA's access types. These types are always initialized and have compiler inserted scope accessibility checks and null dereferencing checks. In our compilable C example on the left, an uninitialized integer pointer P is dereferenced. If we are lucky, this is a null dereference or a segmentation fault that we learned quickly about. And if it's not, we have introduced memory corruption that will be hard to track down. On the other hand, ADA's access type semantics allow us to specify P and not be null or uninitialized. And the assignment operator yields a compiler scope accessibility check that ensures the lifetime of I is at least as long as the lifetime of P to mitigate dangling references. The runtime error of the C code has been moved to compilation time in ADA. A characteristic common to embedded systems is that they have real-time requirements. A whole chapter of the book is dedicated to presenting the concurrency abstractions of ADA. What makes ADA's process and data synchronization primitives appealing is that they were designed to be portable from their inception, even on bare metal systems. Code written with this concurrency model unburdens a developer from implementing their own model or operating system-specific code. The book also introduces the Ravenscar profile, a subset of language features that the compiler can help you use to ensure your code does not suffer from single core deadlock, has deterministic execution, has a well-defined memory bound, and can have its schedulability analyzed. Of key concern in embedded software engineering is interaction with the hardware, what we refer to in the book as low-level programming. The chapter on low-level programming is driven by particularly tangible real-world examples, such as interaction with device or peripheral registers and data serialization. One topic discussed is writing portable specifications of data representation. Bitfields in C introduce a dependency on the compiler, as it is left to the compiler to determine which bits in the underlying data type will store the field. It allows the precise definition of which bits in which byte will store a field, and the data representable in the fields can still make use of the type system. Ada's representation clauses remove the burden of writing logic with bit shifting, bit masking, and bounds checking from the developer as it is automatically generated by the compiler. Another section discusses dealing with the limitations of a floating point unit. When commutation with the floating point unit is much more computationally expensive than the integer unit, fixed point computation is useful to improve program performance. Unlike in C, ADA has native fixed point types, and the compiler automatically generates the operators and implementations for these useful types. The example shown here shows how to define a fixed point type, which discretizes the range negative 1 to 1 with a resolution of 2 to negative 31st. Last but not least is a topic of interacting with the CPU. For when you need the absolute lowest level of interaction, ADA still has language standardized mechanisms for embedding assembly code and handling CPU interrupts, which decouple your code from operating system or compiler specifics to improve portability. The book acknowledges the technical and business limitations of rewriting entire C code bases in ADA, and instead, discusses realistic multi-language solutions. One aspect the book covers are the techniques for rewriting parts of a C code base with ADA to meet improved safety, security, and quality requirements. The side-by-side -side examples, translating the C implementation to the improved ADA implementation, provide processes for how to improve project organization with packages, 
replace pointers with safer Ada language features, use language features in place of error-prone manual code using bitwise operations, and increasing code reuse with generic programming and object orientation. A section with all the details on the standardized interoperation of Ada and C will teach you how to use the bindings like the ones shown here to get your new mixed language project up and running in no time. Notice that generating this binding is as simple as using types from Ada's standard library and the appropriate pragmas to ensure compatible ABIs. And the book provides detailed information on when and how you can automatically generate them. Last but not least, the book covers Ada's cutting edge frontier of contract-based programming. This language feature allows the programmer to add to their function specification two things, the assumptions on how their function is invoked, as well as the guarantees on the effects of their implementation. Perhaps best explained with an example from the book, let's suppose one is designing a function to calculate the midpoint between two integers. For efficiency reasons, the designer of this function decides parameter x must always be smaller than y. This assumption on the function invocation can be specified by a precondition in its specification, and the compiler can insert runtime checks to ensure this precondition is met at each call site. Suppose the designer wants to specify how corner cases where y equals x plus 1 are handled. The post condition x less than mid tick result does just that by specifying results are rounded up. The compiler can now insert checks to ensure the implementation holds true to this. Design by contract is a great programming practice in general, but Ada takes this one step further with Spark, a formally provable subset of the Ada 2012 language that is fit for sound static analysis and formal method techniques. In the book, you will find examples of how formal proof techniques can guarantee an absence of runtime errors, prove abstract properties often useful in certification contexts, and make your code more performant by letting you safely remove defensive code entirely. You've probably noticed a trend in what many of Ada's language features provide. Namely, they increase the amount of static checking the compiler performs and runtime checks it inserts. Just as the book does, we will close out this discussion by briefly presenting its business-related content. Ada's design and language features mean you as a developer actually need to expend less effort to implement reliable code. Let's use an example to illustrate how the language and the tools help you achieve correct code more easily. An example of an Ada language feature that can unburden the developer are preconditions. When using preconditions, the language and the compiler takes the burden of inserting runtime code to ensure dynamically that the function is called in a legal context. But you can also statically analyze the call sites and flag potential errors without running the code at all. This is just one example of how Ada's rich semantics and compiler-generated safety checks allow static analysis tools such as CodePeer and Spark to analyze runtime checks statically and reduce the effort to achieve reliability. In practice, this means that the language and the tools help you prevent bugs or identify them sooner when they are cheaper and there is less schedule pressure. That last statement, finding bugs when they are cheaper, is what verification-centric development is all about. In this style of development, developers acknowledge that bugs are inevitable, and they are cheaper to fix early in the software lifecycle, since their effects haven't spread throughout the rest of the project. Since the cost of fixing bugs, the red line, is hard to change, you can expect cost and schedule benefits when you find bugs earlier, or as the book calls it, on the developer's desk. This brings us to the end of the presentation. To recap, our new book is online, interactive, and free at learn.adacore.com. The texts and examples are based off of practical lessons learned from C developers adopting Ada, and will teach you how to use Ada's rich semantics to get correct code sooner and catch bugs when they're cheaper, and make your tools more effective. Leverage Ada to create portable and maintainable solutions ideal for long-lived projects. Make code safe and performant using Spark and formal proof methodologies. And finally, deliver reliable, safety and security critical software economically using verification-centric development.